Hey crafty people, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. Over the years I've dabbled in most types of crafting, although for the past decade or so I've been doing primarily card making and mixed media art. I've recently embarked on a junk journaling journey that I hope you'll join me on. Today, we're gonna to be playing Distress Ink Mystery Color Combo. What's that? I have put all of my Distress Ink colors names in this cup and we are gonna draw two colors out and see what they look like mixed together. <clears throat> Today, we're gonna to play Distress Ink Mystery Color Combo. What's that you say? We're gonna draw color names out of this mug and see what they look like combined together. Let's get crafting. So today we're just gonna have a play with Distress Inks and I'm using the Distress Inks, not the Distress Oxides because I have a ton of Distress Inks. And if you watched my video where I was altering paper, paper with Distress Inks, I combined, I feel like it was ripe persimmons and either shabby shutters or bundled sage and I really liked how that color combo worked and didn't think I'd used it before got me to thinking that I really need to experiment with my Distress Inks. I've got a ton of them and I don't use enough variety of the colors that I have. So what I did is if you go on the Ranger website and I'll put a link to it below, there's a page, this is a remnant of that page, where there are little labels that you can use on your Distress Ink pads and it's all of the named colors of Distress Inks. And in case you don't know, there are currently 72 colors, and that includes Picket Fence, which really isn't quite a Distress Ink, and I have all but 15 of them. <laughs> um, this is this is not a I bought this all at once kind of thing. It's a gradual, over the years, uh, accumulation of color. So I put the names of all the colors I have, I cut them out, and I put them in this little cup, and... I'm gonna shake this up and I'm gonna grab two colors out of the mug and we're gonna see what they look like together because I need to experiment more with my colors and get out of my routine color combos for distress inks. So lucky number one is ripe persimmon. Okay, let me grab that color. We're gonna use ripe persimmon for this round. And pine needles. Okay, let me find pine needles. This should be interesting. And so what I did is I've already gone ahead and cut down some Canson XL watercolor paper and some regular cardstock. And yes, they're, they're kind of funky sizes because I pulled out my Canson XL watercolor paper is on nine by 12. And so I was cutting those down into fourths, which would make them six by four and a half. And then when I went to cut my white cardstock, which is, I think, Georgia Pacific white cardstock, um, my bearing was still stuck on the six instead of the five and a half because my regular cardstock's eight and a quarter by 11. So yeah, I just basically cut my papers into four pieces so that they'd be a little easier to work with. I also figured what I want to do is a wet technique using the Distress Ink color combo, and then a dry technique using a stencil. So that's what we're gonna do. And I need to, for my setup, I've got a nonstick craft mat uh, on my glass mat because if you do a wet technique using Distress Inks on a glass mat, they, the colors will kind of blend together and that might result in mud depending on what colors we pick out of the Magic Cup. And this way, I can play around for a little while, set this aside to dry, and then still have a relatively clean work surface to keep playing. So we're gonna start with a wet technique, and we're gonna use ripe persimmons, because I think we should start with that. It's a lighter color than the pine needles. So I'm just gonna smush it on my craft mat. Add a little water. And bigger droplets and I'm just going to take my watercolor cardstock and tap and tap and tap. So if you're not aware 
there are a total of 72 Distress Ink colors currently in the Distress Ink line. And I'm gonna set this guy aside to dry naturally because I prefer that to using a heat gun. And now I'm gonna pull out my Make Art Station because I like using it for stenciling and we're gonna do one where we stencil. And you know what, I meant to, ooh, I apparently got ink on my hands and I'm getting it everywhere. Right on the back of that piece, the colors we're using. And this is Tin Tile. It's a stencil by Simon Says Stamp. I think I managed to get dirt. Apparently I have just messy hands today. Okay. I'm gonna grab one of my Distress Ink brushes and we're just gonna add some ripe persimmons to this. Just gonna do a little bit of random stenciling. So <clears throat> as I was saying, there's currently 72 colors in the Distress Ink line of colors. And that includes Picket Fence, which isn't a true Distress Ink. It's the white, it's a pigment ink, not a dye ink like all the Distress Inks are. So now we're gonna add some pine needles and see what these two colors look like together. So I was saying there's 72 colors currently, and of course my dogs are gonna go crazy now. No, uh, this is 2023, there's gonna be one more color released, and that will be the last color in the Distress Ink color line. Um, and it's gonna be a neutral. If you watched the release of Lost Shadow, that's when Tim Holtz uh, announced that there would be one more color coming out this year, and then that would be the last of the Distress Inks, and that would be the complete line of Distress Ink colors. And I have in my collection, hesitant to say it, 57 of the colors. <laughs> um, and, and this is, I've been accumulating Distress Ink colors for many years now. So I just kind of want to see how they look blended together. So that's why I'm like pulling in some of the ripe persimmon into the pine needles. And I honestly was a little hesitant when I pulled the colors. I was a little worried they were gonna be horrible together, but it's not bad. Um, so yeah, I have, I've been accumulating Distress Inks for uh, many years now. I started using them ooh, well over a decade ago. So a lot of my colors, especially a lot of the disused ones I have, are from when I first started using Distress Inks. And so they used to get a lot more love than they do now. All right. You know, that's not bad. I was I was a little worried pine needles and ripe persimmon would not look great together, but I kind of like that. Um, so there's what it looks like stenciled together. I'm gonna pull over and see if we're dry. Our wet technique one is mostly dry. I'll probably hit it with a heat gun, just dry up a few more spots. All right, so let's add some pine needles. And just, you know, in case you don't know, Distress Inks first came out in 2004. And When they first came out, the colors were Antique Linen, Old Paper, Tea Dye, Vintage Photo, Walnut Stain, and Black Soot. Now there was a second release in 2004, and that one included Tattered Rose, Fired Brick, Mustard Seed, Peeled paint, weathered wood, and milled lavender. I think I'm gonna heat to dry this. And the reason I'm drying between adding on is because if you're not familiar with Distress Inks, wet on wet blends wet on dry layers. So if you want your colors to blend, go ahead and add new colors while they're still wet. If you want layers though, you need to dry between or set it aside and let it dry on its own.
All right, I'm gonna set this aside to dry on its own and we're gonna pick two more colors and start with the stenciling for that one. And we're gonna shake our hands, put our hand in and come out with, oh, two stuck together. Apparently these two want to go together. Iced spruce and aged mahogany. All right, let me go pull those out. So ice spruce, I just have a, as a mini because I was um, running out of space and decided I should start buying the smaller ones. And aged mahogany is probably one of the first distress ink colors that I ever got. So let's see what happens with these two. And again, I'm gonna go with the lighter first. And before I do that, let's write these on the back so that I know what colors I used. And this is another Simon Says Stamp Stencil. And it's called Flora. All right, let's do this. Um, and please excuse my squeaky, squeaky chair. Um, I tried. I had my dad come over. We took the whole thing apart pretty much trying to figure out what's causing the squeak and see if we could eliminate the squeaking and no luck. So I'll just have to excuse my squeaky chair until I at some point get a new chair, which is not high on my to-do list, I'll be honest. And that shifted and so I'm just trying to get it lined back up. There we go. I picked up Ice Bruce because I saw someone do something with it and was like, ooh, I need that color. And I don't know if I've ever used it. This is the problem. Okay, I think I need another few magnets on this sucker because this guy is just moving around all over the place. And I'm sure you can hear my dogs barking outside because, well, they're beagles, so they bark at everything. All right, let's try adding some aged mahogany and see what happens. And these are makeup brushes I picked up on line on Amazon, and I will try and leave a link for them down below. I really like them for my stenciling. Um, I think they give a much nicer, evener coat than like these guys or their bigger cousins these guys um, I tend to use those little ones for when I'm inking edges because that works a lot better but for stenciling I really um, prefer these brushes and a lot of company makes a lot of companies make them and, you know, Simon Says Stamp has a beautiful set that's all in the rainbow of colors. And every time I see them, I'm like, ooh, I kind of want them. And then I look at the price tag and go, I'll stick with my ones from Amazon that are a lot less expensive. Um, I do not have an infinite uh, craft budget, even though I do spend way too much stuff uh, money on craft supplies. Um, so... I like to save money where I can and something like these where I can get a deal on Amazon, I'm gonna go for it. I'm actually kind of really liking this color combo together. This experiment is turning out great. All right, let's go in and add a little bit more ice spruce. Get some blending going. Actually, what I may do is try and clean some of uh, the ink off the stencil before I go back in and add more of the ice spruce so it's not pulling extra aged mahogany back onto the page. Right. 
I really like how that came out. Oh, this experiment's turning out great. All right. And I think I want to add a little bit more ripe persimmons to this, just a few dots. And I think I may use a paintbrush to do that. Okay, apparently there's not wet enough. There we go. That did not work at all. And now I have an orange finger. <laughs> all right, let's see if we can get a few Ooh, that was a little bit bigger than I wanted. I probably should stick my splatter box up because I'm splattering stuff everywhere, but oh well. So I'm just gonna let that dry. And actually, I think I may add some green as well before I set it to side to dry. a few splatters of this going like that. And we're gonna set this guy aside to dry and we're gonna play with our aged mahogany and iced spruce. Now when you're um, putting ink on your nonstick craft mat you need to make sure you push down because if you just tap, you're not going to get any ink on the surface. And you can do this to break up the lines and get some bigger um, sections. Droplets, that's what I was going for. You can get some bigger droplets. And while that's drying, let's draw two more colors. And we'll start with the stenciling. Pull out our cup. And two were in my hand. So we've got antique linen and gathered twigs. All right. Suspect they're going to go together just fine since they're both kind of neutrally brown. But let's find those. So let's write our colors on the back. It's another Simon Says Stamp stencil. Now Antique Linen is one of my newer acquisitions and I don't know if I've used it yet. This is the problem, I buy things and then don't get around to using them. So we'll start with that because that's obviously the lighter color. Just add some Now we'll use some gathered twigs. Now, um, what I'm doing to clean off my brushes because I don't have a brush for every distress ink color I have because, wow, that'd be a lot of brushes, um, is the cloth has got a little water on it so that I'm not getting the brush really, really wet. And so I'm just wiping it on the wet spot and then drying it off so that it's going to take off um, most of the color. The rest of this is just probably permanent staining, which is good because then I know which one's the browns. So I tend to have a brush for each color family instead of each color. And not surprisingly, these two are playing nicely together because, you know, they're both neutrals. They're both brown in the brown family.
Hey, yeah, nice browns. A little, shall we say, underwhelming in the fact that we've got just basically brown. Um, but you know what? This is the process we are randomly selecting, so we might end up getting something like that. So there is our ice spruce background so far. I'm going to hit it with a heat gun to dry a few of these other spots. I think I'm going to leave my drops of iced spruce on here this time and just come in with some aged mahogany as well. Don't worry, it's not going to hurt my ink pad. As you can see, it's fine. And we're going to spray. Get a little swishing going on in there and just tap away. And we'll do our gathered twigs and antique linen. And this one, I'm just gonna heat gun it. And I'm gonna do another layer of the antique linen, and then we'll do some gathered twigs. I'm just gonna blot along the edge here where I've got more liquid than I want because it's gonna take forever to dry. Do the same here. And that's something to keep in mind when you're doing this. You're gonna get a varied result. So, so, so if you like a lot of control in your mixed media, this is not um, a technique for you because, yeah, you never know what you're going to get when you do this. So that's another thing to keep in mind. When I press harder, it smooshes. When you press lighter, you get speckles. I think for this, I wanna do a little splattering on. And the reason I'm kind of holding it up like this is because I don't feel like dragging out my splatter box <laughs> and so it's protecting the rest of my desk from the splatters going everywhere. For this round we're just going to do a combo of both on the mat. They kind of blend it together and smoosh on. Because that's something you can always do is put multiple colors down and kind of... So I've got some areas of just the antique linens, some of them blended together, and some um, of just the gathered twigs. Add a little water on directly to get some more movement. Because, yeah, some of those darker spots of gathered twigs, I just want to get moving around a little bit. I 
think I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry naturally and we'll see what it looks like. So this guy's mostly dry. I think we need a little bit more of H mahogany on here and a little bit more ice spruce. So we'll start with the ice spruce. And I'm just not even gonna bother cleaning the mat. We'll see what we get. Actually, I think in this middle here where we got it really dark, I'm gonna hit that with a little, get it to move a little, and maybe tap a little off. So that's something you can do too, is you can spray, wait a second for it to reactivate the colors and then tap off to get some spots. Let's see if you can see, helps if I'm on screen, like right here, let's see, right there. You can see like the lighter spots. So that is another technique to keep in mind when you're playing with your distress inks and water. You definitely want to get some more ice spruce on this. Yeah, I'm using the ice spruce. And I'm thinking, now that I've played with ice spruce, I want a bigger pad. That, that age mahogany is re reactivating nicely there. All right, so we're gonna set that sucker aside to dry. And why not, let's go ahead and pull two more colors. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. Kinda, kinda hoping for a blue in this grab. Like, like a blue blue. All right. Ah, I got a blue blue. Ah, oh, savage patina, not a blue blue, okay. And there's two stuck together. Let's see what we grabbed here. Okay, picket fence. All right, that's a white. So I'm gonna grab a third color for this one. And that third color is milled lavender. This should be an interesting color combo. As I mentioned earlier, picket fence is white and it's a pigment ink because you can't really do, I think, a dye ink in white. Milled lavender and salvaged patina. So since we've got this mat out, let's do that first. I'm gonna make a note on the back what we're playing with. So this one I'm gonna go last with because it's a white and it's not gonna show up unless I put some color on. And both milled lavender and salvaged patina are kind of light. So I'm not sure how well the white's gonna show up when we do that, but this is what we're, we're just playing around. So even if we don't love the results, we can always cut the pages down, use them in different ways. This is one of those things you can just play around with your colors. And if you don't have a ton of distress inks, you can still play with what colors you have. You could also do this with distress oxides. I only have a few distress oxide inks, so that's why I went with my distress inks, because I have a ton of them and I don't play with them often enough. This off, and we'll add our salvaged patina. Now, and if you've got a bunch of pigment inks instead of dye inks, the wet techniques aren't gonna work for you, but you can play with combining them on stencils just to see what you get. Um, I, I encourage you to just, every once in a while, just pull out your craft supplies and play with them. Ooh, these are nice together. For a nice soft effect, the salvage patina and milled lavender look lovely together. That's what we're getting so far. Definitely want to add more of the salvaged patina. I'm going to dry first. I 
I'm also gonna add a little bit more ink to my salvaged patina because it's feeling a little dry. And that's something I love about the Distress Inks is they all come with re-inkers. Um, and basically all you have to do is smoosh some of the re-inker on the pad and let it seep in. And if you've got an old gift card, it's good to, you know, spread it out so that the whole ink pad gets nice and juicy. Um, but you don't have to, you can just leave it and let it soak in. This one's always required me to push a little bit more to get the ink out of the ink pad. I don't know why that is. Doing that also helps get some bigger dots. I'm gonna set this aside to dry and then come back, add a little bit more milled lavender and then we'll add some of the picket fence. And let's stencil. All right. Cleaned off my stencil, got everything all set up. We're just gonna come in and stencil with milled lavender and salvage patina. Now, I'm probably for the picket fence going to pull out a sponge dauber because you don't really want to mix your pigment and your dye inks on your brushes. And I don't want to have to fully clean a brush off after I use the picket fence. So we're just going to use a dauber. I am not surprised that these are looking lovely together because we've got a soft bluey green and a soft purple. Yeah, this is not a big surprise that they work out together. Now, milled lavender is definitely one of those colors I got early on that has been neglected as other colors have come out in the Distress line. I'm more likely to grab wilted violet than I am milled lavender, but this is a good reminder of the colors I have and that I should give them some love every once in a while. All right, now let's see what happens when we add a little picket fence to this. I'm not surprised we're not seeing much going on here because we're, we're, we're dealing with white. Like it's, it's, it's maybe lighting, lightening up some spots. Um, I think this would work much better in combo with a darker color combo, but this color combo is very, very light. And so I'm not surprised we're not seeing too much from the white, but ooh, isn't that a lovely color combo? So yeah, I like this color combo too. This is turning out to be a great experiment. <laughs> All right, I definitely wanna add, I think some more milled lavender to this one. And I think I'm gonna skip adding the picket fence because quite frankly, the background's just too light for it to do anything on. So let's take a look at our final results. This was right percent, oh yeah, right persimmon and pine needles. And that's our wet technique and our dry stenciling with those two colors. This was aged mahogany and iced spruce. And I never would have put these two colors together. And I absolutely love how they came out. 
this is antique linen and what was it gathered twigs yes gathered twigs um it's a good brown i actually have an idea for what i want to do with this piece so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when i do that video um but very nice i mean it's a nice brown combo but nothing spectacular um then i believe the next one we did was the milled lavender and salvage patina and i don't know that i necessarily would have put these together not because i wouldn't have thought they'd go together but just because i don't tend to grab milled lavender all that much anymore and so now i gotta remember to use my milled nut lavender um and since i don't know what's ending up on the editing room floor <laughs> at this point that i'm recording this i don't know if this one's in the video or not and this combo is evergreen bow and chip sapphire the stenciling one's nice but i really like how they look together in the wet technique again not a color combo i would likely have tried on my own and now i definitely didn't film these i cut two sheets of watercolor paper and two sheets of cardstock down so i figured i'd just go ahead and do all of them um so this one is worn lipstick and squeezed lemonade i think it's probably a color combo i've done before in the past it's a nice bright springy summery color combo i'm um, not surprising it works well together the yellow and the pink tend to work nice and make a pretty kind of orange and then this one is bundled sage and kitsch flamingo green and pink a good color combo um i like how these guys came out too and then for the last combo i'll admit i almost cheated i pulled the colors and the first one i pulled was lost shadow and this is the first time i've had a chance to play with lost shadow which it's a new ink and it's new to my collection and then i pulled rusty hinge and i was like oh, i really wanted to bright fun color to go with rusty with lost shadow especially the first time i was playing with it but i went nope stick to the rules play with those two colors and honestly i probably wouldn't have ever combined these two colors because i don't tend to combine gray and brown all that often but it's a good color combo with the stenciling but with the wet technique oh my like especially over here like if you want a nice like rusty grungy color but you want it lighter you don't want to go very dark these two colors together i just oh they came out great i just love it so i am very glad i stuck to the rules and went ahead and did those so here are all the various projects or color combos we put together drawing names out of a hat essentially um so this is a good lesson uh in experimenting like just pull stuff out let let the fates decide what colors you're going to combine and you might find some new favorite color combos like this one um this one i kind of really like together as well so there are definitely several color combos here i never would have thought of on my own that i really like how they turned out so if you're feeling a little low on mojo, don't know what kind of crafting you want to do, toss a bunch of colors in a hat, pull them out, and play. And even if it doesn't come out as great as you think it will, and this is showing up really dark on the screen, it's a lot lighter in person and prettier, I think, um, as an aside. Even if you don't love the entire piece, there might be sections of it you can cut out and use in projects, or you can die cut. And die cutting just changes everything. If you do like a lacy doily die or one of those butterflies that have a lot of open spaces, completely change the look of your inked backgrounds. I am definitely going to be doing some projects in the future with all these various lovely backgrounds we created. So if you enjoyed this project, be sure to do all the things that lets YouTube know you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment down below, like the video, sub subscribe, hit the notification bell. And so you definitely want to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss what I do with all these lovely backgrounds. That's all for today. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.